Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Week Zero event in Manchester, checking in team number 509 Red Storm. This is actually their home field, home turf here, so very excited to talk more about uh, this robot. This is the first robot we've seen do a traversal climb. you got to check out the traversal climb that goes into this. But, of course, we'll be talking about uh, their intake indexing shooter. All this and more coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. Get ready to celebrate your Rapid React build season with Premiere Night on Saturday, February 26th at 6 p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. This year, no matter where you are in creating your robot, submit a 90 second or less video celebrating your build season to Premiere Night. Submissions are due by the end of Thursday, February 24th, and you can get more details on any fun social channel or at firstupdatesnow.com forward slash Premiere 22. So Tyler, we're gonna start out with you talking about your intake. Talk to me a little about just the concept design, maybe choice of different wheels that you had going into this intake as well. All right, so uh, first of all, this is a uh our intake, meant to be flexible, um, that's a purposeful design choice. The theory behind this is ultimately that we want this to be as flexible as possible. Uh, that allows us to, you know, obviously not break the intake, which is gonna be a, a huge issue, and um, allows us to sort of mess with the angles, um, which makes us more flexible picking up balls. So, uh, the basic theory is that this is able to uh, rotate freely. Uh, the caveat being that we have these clips. These clips, as you just saw, are going to stop this from going too far, that allows us to maintain tension on the ball as we're intaking. So it gives um, you a little bit, a little bit of flex, and the ball doesn't come out at the same point in time exactly. too. I love yep. that thought process yep. to it. Yeah. And we've uh, made them removable so that if I can get this in one shot, so that uh, so that we can be within our frame perimeter at the start. Basically, all we have to do is just flip this upward. We uh, fasten that with Velcro, yeah. and then we're all set. So this will drop down, stay down the entire match, right? Yes, it will. Yeah. And it's meant to not have to be retractable, so all we got to do is drop it down to the beginning of the match, and we're all set. Keep us, uh, keep us going on here. We'll go into the uh, intake uh, as well, but continue on anything else with the uh, intake and indexing. Sure. So a couple of final notes are we have purposely omitted um, pneumatics on this robot. That allows us to drop it down freely, not have to pull it back up. Saves a good amount of weight on the robot, and you know, eliminates possible factors where things could break. Um, that's about it for the intake. After we clear the intake, what's gonna happen is, as this is prevented from flexing, yep. So as the ball is grabbed by this piece of Lexan on the back, it's tensioned by these uh, aluminum rods, 3 8 um, and driven by one Falcon 500 straight up to the shooter. Um, the process is meant to be as simple as we could possibly make it, just one shoot straight up to the shooter and we are all set. I think it's really clean too. Some of the things I've seen a lot of teams that kind of have either a hard 90 or they're doing an S curve, which is great as well too. But this might be, for, for just being a, a straight up curve, might be one of the cleanest uh, indexing I've seen. So this looks really good. Certainly, yeah. We wanted to eliminate uh, as many points of contention as possible. Just one straight shoot and we are done. Well, next up we're gonna be talking about the uh, shooter. Uh, talk to me a little about uh, where you're shooting from, uh, uh, choice of wheels, anything else that might've gone into this as well. So I think James is going to talk more about that. All right, so this year for our shooter, we are running a flywheel off of two Falcon motors with a um, two to one gear ratio. And um, we currently have a limelight mounted, but we're not using it. Usually when we try to shoot, we have found that shooting from the fender is the most consistent. Yeah. So um, we just have two set speeds just for the lower and the higher goal. So whenever we line up just by running into the fender, we can uh, make those shots accurately. Are you shooting only low or are you shooting high as well? Uh, it can make it into both low and high, but sure. our lower is more consistent right now. Yeah, and you're able to get faster cycle times yes. that way too, I would assume. Uh, so in, in a moment, we'll be talking about your climber, but the one thing I want to ask is teams who have like a traversal climb, sometimes you got to make sacrifices in regards to what's priority and things. So when you're looking at uh, this game in Rapid React, where did like, from a shooting perspective, where was that in priority to maybe like your climber? Uh, so the way we really designed it was we first focused on um, our drivetrain, which this year we're using the Mark IV Swerve modules from Swerve Drive Specialties. And after laying out just a basic square 28 by 28 frame, we just kind of fit where uh, things wherever they could fit. Um, currently in our robot, we have two 
horizontal bars just going from the front to the back, and that's where most of our subsystems are mounted. That's where our climber, our elevator, and our shooter are mounted. And we really designed um, our climber around fitting within this narrow space. Um, so fitting between this narrow space, we just had to fit everything else within that, especially considering for our climber arms, they have full range of motion from the back to the front of the robot. Well, I think obviously one of the big highlights in your robot is your traversal climb. Uh, so talk to me a little more about uh, some of the uh, concept, the actual implementation of it, because you've done it every single match so far. That's looked great. Talk to me more about it. So uh, conceptually, we were going for this, this big climber to get ourselves onto that first bar. And we have these two swinging arms as our, like, our pretty much our range of motion. And uh, our, our priority is to get those onto the first bar so we can pretty much swing forward and unhook these from the yeah. top bar and just climb back up. Um, our priority was to make this as sturdy as possible and as consistent as possible. So we have this really tough chain and um, four bolts going through to uh, keep, it, keep it tight and keep it uh, connected. Um, our other priority was like ease of getting onto the, onto the bar. So we have these curved hooks that pretty much just fit snug over the bar and like we could just pull down pretty easily. Uh, so so, me, so oh, yeah. me, let me, let me ask you on, on this on here. When you guys are, have climbed the three times, uh, how long has it taken you during these three? And then what's kind of like when you get ready for your first week, what's kind of your objective for a timing perspective? Um, from a timing perspective, it's taken us like 30, 40 seconds yeah. uh, here. And like our practices were also 30, 40 seconds. I think during week one, our goal is uh, 25, maybe 30, just in that range, because that's all, all Endgame is. And keeping it consistent is more important to us than keeping it, keeping it fast, really. Because we can take our time. You want the RP every match, yeah. right? So our priority is the ranking point, not really the not really the flash of going fast. Makes a lot of sense. Well, uh, 509 Redstorm once again, uh, absolutely blown away by your robot consistency. As you said, it's been a huge thing for your team. So can't wait to see you compete when the competition season starts. So good luck, of course, here at Week Zero. But looking forward to really seeing your robot during competition right. season. Thanks a lot for taking the Thank time. Thank you so much. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Over one third of Kettering's current students are former robotics team members. Go pro at Kettering University and get a free t-shirt. Students in grades eight through 12 and located in the continental US scan the QR code and complete the form by January 31st, 2022 and receive more information about Kettering. Don't forget to like, subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.